Hello everyone. Okay, today I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment here with my videos. This is what I mean. Sometimes I read something, hear something, watch something that I find very interesting and I want to pursue it and then I start thinking, well, perhaps this is what I think about it. Um, perhaps I could do a video on that. But then I find I don't have enough information. I can't speak intelligently about it at all. So I decide, no, I can't do a video on that. But the questions keep in my head. <laughs> um, they remain there. And at the end of the week, I have all these ideas and uh, I, can't, I can't sort them out. So I think it's going to be, uh, I'm going to challenge myself. And I'm going to see if at least once a week, I can do a video on bits and pieces, bits and bobs of things that question marks, exclamation marks that I have on my head about issues that uh, topics that are happening today. And this is going to be uh, what I'm going to do today. Also, the fact I'm going to share this with you. I'm not at all comfortable speaking to a camera, even though I, I am in control of that camera, okay? Um, it is up to me after I record something whether I want to upload it or not and so on. So I'm, I'm in total control, but nevertheless, uh, I keep saying myself, before I start a video, I say, well, you know, if it is really bad, I, I just want to upload it or whatever, okay? But somehow I never do. I am almost incapable of watching a video after I record it. I just, before I, uh, I upload it, I always go to see if the sound is okay. Because once or twice I actually record it and kept talking for about an hour and then I realized that, oh, there was no sound. So I always, before I upload it, I go, is there a sound here in this video? Yes, okay. And I just upload it and I am, um, incapable of looking at it. I'm sort of kind of scared of what I'm going to find. But I see that there are so many people who are so comfortable with the camera that they allow themselves to 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 go on this stream of consciousness. Garland Nixon, Garland like is his name, like flowers. Um, he is superb at this. He starts talking and things just follow. He can connect the thoughts. I am totally incapable of doing that. I think it's because I'm in some way intimidated by this camera in front of, we, of, in front of me, of which I am in control, <laughs> but, but nevertheless, I am intimidated. So the moment I start talking, I, I, I am aware as there is something stopping me from developing my thoughts, as it were. So before I start, I have to make notes and I have to organize my thoughts and I'm going to talk about this and that and the other thing. And sometimes I read you things from books because uh, I, I, I think that by reading, I can share with you something that I'm thinking about, but the the book tells the story so much better than I can. That um, I th so I think it's a little bit of a of a cowardice here <laughs> that I that I have because of the camera. So um, I I I read your stories because I think they were they, because I find them interesting and I want to share them for sure. But also I'm sort of protecting myself in some way because if I were to say it, it wouldn't be as good, that kind of thing. So today I'm going to challenge myself to allow myself to just talk about these question marks, exclamation marks that I have on my head. And I'm going to allow the stream of consciousness to see if I'm capable of doing that. I want to challenge myself because I want to learn how to be comfortable with this silly camera in front of me, <laughs> in front of me. Okay, so bits and bobs of everything. Okay, the um, 
International Court of Justice. Okay, you know South Africa went first and then Israel replied the next day, the lawyers. Okay, so I find that um, I have just real, I don't have a television, so I don't know what the BBC is saying or not saying, or the news in England. But I, I see from some videos that apparently in England and in Italy and in some other uh, European, Western European countries, they did not broadcast the South African um, petition claim. Um, what is the right word for that? Anyway, the, the, uh, the claim that they put before the, uh, before the court. And they didn't broadcast that at all. And they didn't follow it. And they didn't mention it. And nevertheless, the second day, they did broadcast entirely the Israeli uh, reply to that. Uh, I find that amazing. I know that I have many people in India and Pakistan that follow me. Thank you very much. I I don't know quite why, but um, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I just want to let you know that in the Western countries and apparently also in the United States, they didn't broadcast the, um, the, the, the South African uh, claim to the court. Um, do you find that amazing? I, I, I do. Um, um, but apparently, uh, well, I did watch both. I went to the United Nations uh, website and I watched them both. First of all, I was actually amazed at the, uh, I, I, I th yes, amazed at the um, Israeli lawyers who said things like, the destruction of buildings and um, um, houses and so on was due mostly to Hamas rockets and misfiring or something like that, they said. That's, that's unbelievable. How, how could they say that? Um, that they had evidence that every single hospital that was destroyed, that they had evidence, incontrovertible evidence, they said, that the, uh, the terrorists were there. Um, I find that also difficult to believe in its entirety at any, any, in any case. Okay, but what I find amazing is that it was South Africa, the one country that came forward with this petition. That took the moral ground of saying this is wrong, what is happening. All other countries just watched and uh, said nothing. What I think is that, uh, what I find um, worthy of um, being worthy of respect, let me put it that way, is that it was precisely South Africa, the country that suffered most or as much as many from a system of discrimination or apartheid. And it was this country that was able to draw from its experience from its suffering and react to that saying we think that this is wrong 
many countries and many cultures have suffered also, but did not have the courage to do so. So I, I applaud South Africa because I think that they felt a moral imperative to speak up. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to agree with everything they said or even with anything they said, but they reacted to something that touched their experience of suffering and said instead of feeling or feeling revenge for whoever caused this suffering of ours, we're going to take the moral high ground of saying, not re of going not for revenge, but for helping out those who might be in the same situation. Um, what else? Okay, that is what I want to say about this, the International Court of Justice. Something completely different. I know that many of you might follow Alex Christopher, Christophero and Alexander Mercurius and the Duran um, on their uh, covering, cover, covering of uh, you know what happened, what is happening in the world, uh, geopolit geopolitics for the most part. Um, I notice that um, Alex is talking about the pudding <laughs> always and uh, that brings back to mind uh, the Donald you remember as uh, some Americans um, speak of Donald Trump okay I want to add a little bit of my two cents of what I think about this I have the quote here from another uh, uh, video channel that I follow from time to time, not all the time. And this is a video channel which um, it says through the eyes of, and it's from a lovely lady from Poland who speaks and interviews people about um, politics and geopolitics and what is happening with Ukraine and everything else, okay? And in one of the videos, the title is, and I'm going to read it um, exactly as she wrote it there. Quote, police entered the residential palace in Poland because Duda gave the shelter to two convicts. The shelter, okay, with the determinate article there. Police entered the residential palace in Poland because Duda gave the shelter to two convicts. Now, the shelter, okay, the putting, the Donald. Okay, this is my two cents. This, the Donald, uh, was misunderstood in America. I think what happened here is that uh, President Trump's first wife, who was also Eastern European, I, uh, I think she's passed away now, um, I don't remember her name, but um, she was also from one of the countries of Eastern Europe, uh, Slavic language. And you might be aware that in some Slavic language, the articles the and the indeterminate articles a uh, do not exist in the language. I taught languages uh, for quite a while and I do <coughs> notice the difficulties uh, that some um, speakers of foreign languages have with English, for example. Okay. So the Spanish will have some difficulties, the French will have other difficulties, the Eastern Europeans, the Russians and others, I always noticed that the articles was, some, was something that they found particularly difficult. Now, 
the difference between the determinate and the indeterminate article. At first, they get it, okay? The determinate article, the, the book. It's very easy to explain that you're talking about that one specific book. A book is any other book, and that is easy to understand. But it gets a little bit more complicated. And in abstract terms, like beauty or reading, they will say the reading is good for you. No, 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 not the reading. <laughs> reading, but, but, okay. Um, in this case, the shelter. Okay, she didn't need that article, but that is one of the difficulties because it gets, at the beginning it's easy to know whether you're talking about something specific or not, but it gets a little bit more complicated, as I said. So, when talking about abstract words, signif uh, words signifying abstract ideas, in English you don't put the article there, Okay, so beauty is wonderful. Reading is good for you, not the reading. Okay, so you, you, you're you with me. So I think that what happened here when President uh, Trump's wife said the Donald, I think because she, her English was not very good. His present wife's English is much, much better, but the first wife's was not, you know, perfect. So. I think she actually made the mistake of saying, instead of saying Donald, she just said the Donald. Why? Because in her mind, since it was a specific thing, like a specific person, like the book is a specific book, to her, in her native language, not having articles, to her it made sense to say the Donald, a specific person, you see. That sounded strange to English-speaking ears, and so in America it was translated and interpreted as if, as if it, she had said the Donald, meaning arrogance and so on, okay? I don't think that that was it. I think she actually just make, made a grammatical mistake. So um, I would say to Alex Christophorus uh, to try to follow with this the pudding, which he's doing on purpose, obviously, because English is his native language, but he is equating the two, um, does not make sense there. Okay, that's, that's, that's one. Um, something completely different. I'm just, you know, going from one thing to another. Um, I had in one of the comments uh, you know who you are. Um, I, I follow all of you who comment all the time, and I'm very, very grateful for your comments. Oh, by the way, comments. Yes, I had one saying um, why um, one of the comments was uh, deleted and so on. And I did reply, I don't normally do that. Um, I have in the one year that I've been doing this, um, that I've had this channel, channel. I, I think I deleted about three or four only, but not because they were uh, disagreeing with me or in opposition. It was because I felt that there was not, there was no good faith behind the comments. I don't mind if you disagree with me, but just say it directly, don't bring, nasty feelings into it okay it's 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 kind of ugly uh, so so in in the course of a year i think i have deleted about three okay uh and most of them were for my channel in in spanish about argentinian politics so I, I don't normally delete comments, but I deleted two. Uh, I think it was yesterday because they came, it came garbled. I didn't know at first whether it was a foreign language or something like that. It didn't look to me like Arabic. It didn't look to me like um, Chinese or, or, or Russian. I, I don't know. I don't know the languages, but it looked, 
it looked funny and I thought I don't know what this person is saying it's it, I think it was garbled I, I don't know why so that is why I deleted because if uh, if it is in a foreign language I would like to be able to translate what it is what the person is saying I don't like leaving something there that could be saying I don't know whatever you know and I don't know what it is so that is the only reason why I deleted that just just for your information but I did have a comment from one of you my one of my followers you know who you are saying that um, you know you were in Italy for Christmas and you were unable to to find a Christmas card a real one you know with with the meaning of Christmas rather than balloons and things and Santa Clauses and so on and uh, it is becoming increasingly difficult isn't it to to attach the the meaning of Christmas to how Christmas is being celebrated today in the West uh, sometimes I wonder where you've heard of the um, Stockholm um, syndrome right uh, individuals who a captive I think there is evidence for this that if you are in a position of being let's say a captive of someone of a captor you eventually begin to agree with your captor and begin to think like him or her um, and psychologists say that uh, well it ends up in being something like your instinct for self-preservation there comes a time when your instinct for self-preservation is much stronger than your sense of liberty or um, or what you might think about this or that the instinct of self-preservation takes over and so in order to survive you begin to agree with the person who's inflicting pain on you um, and you know I wonder whether this applies not only to individuals but to countries too the common culture of a country if a country or a culture has been subdued has been humiliated has been laughed at mocked that eventually that culture or that country also begins to assume that its culture is not good enough and so you begin to imitate those who are mocking you could it happen to countries this Stockholm syndrome I think it does and so some countries figuratively begin to flagellate themselves and copy and imitate the people who have viewed them as inferior in some way and the thing about South Africa if I if I can go back to that is that they haven't succumbed to that they haven't said oh okay we must be sort of not as good no they stood up and they said this is wrong and many countries in Europe I'm thinking of Eastern European countries that felt during the Soviet Union that you know they looked up to the West that um, they could have done the same instead of flagellating themselves and thinking themselves not good enough to the West they could actually draw as South African did from their suffering and their humiliation and stand up for those who find themselves in their similar position um, okay so that's uh, what else another another completely different point England's Prime Minister uh, Rishi Sunak I I think I read or I saw um, 
somewhere. He went to uh, Ukraine, gave them 2.5 billion pounds, or promised them, said that uh, Britain will stand with Ukraine for centuries, apparently. Um, and uh, what else did he say? Um, yes, I have it here. That uh, NATO needs Ukraine more than Ukraine needs NATO. What do you think about this? What 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 is he doing? Um, Rishi Sunak, Sunak. Um, he's from Indian descent. I'm reading about India actually first because I have so many followers there. Second, because my very 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 best friend is Indian from India my very best friend and I'm reading now about the history of India and so on but I want to ask my Indian followers tell me what you think okay here in the West all right in Britain Rishi Sunak is of Indian descent the mayor of London is from Pakistani descent. He's been very quiet lately. I don't watch television, so perhaps he's been there, but he was normally there to be seen by everyone on woke things, which he agreed with, on the um, uh, pandemic thing. He was always there. Uh, he's he's gone quiet. I I don't know about um, the the uh, the conflict in the Middle East. I haven't heard him speaking or anyone commenting on anything he has said. Um, but of Indian descent, Indians are doing quite well in the West because in the United States. Vivek is also of Indian descent and Nikki Haley running for president, both of them running for president, is of Indian descent. Her mother uh, was Indian and she started by saying um, that, uh, you know, she was an immigrant and she knows how great America is, you know, giving a, uh, an opportunity to everybody and how her mother always dressed in a sari and so on. She left all that now because she it wasn't getting her very far. I think I mentioned this in another video. And now she is a neocom uh, pro-war and, uh, and so on. You can follow her if you wish. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm going to ask Pragya, my friend, to explain to me why the politicians here in the West, in Britain and in the United States, who are involved in politics, and in positions of power and responsibility and so on. Why do they all follow in this pro-war stand? You can be pro-war against war. My question is, the connection of being uh, of Indian descent Because India was also colonized by the British, and I think they would, that Indians would know what being a colony of another country or of another culture feels like. I'm just, I, d I, d I can't connect the knots, the, <laughs> the knots. <laughs> It is it is stream of consciousness, the dots <laughs> of being Indian 
I'm being pro-war. I have to ask Prague. I don't know. What else have I got here? Nothing else. Okay, these are bits and pieces of things that I have in my mind. And, uh, and I'm going to do this once a week. So let me know. Do you agree with me reading you from books that I'm reading, stories? Or do you find that a bore or do you actually find it interesting? I don't, I, because I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Let me know. Bye-bye.